Hello there and welcome to the series of videos going through the content of A-Level Maths. Here we're looking at comparing data so we can answer questions from exercise 3E. So the important part to remember when we're comparing data is we're comparing in two ways. We're comparing the average or the mean or the median maybe and we're also comparing how spread out our data is. So either the standard deviation or the interquartile range. Now it's always best to use the mean and the standard deviation. They're probably um, the most accurate uh, averages that we have. But if your um, data does have extreme values, uh, highs or lows, then probably the median and the interquartile range will, will cancel those out. So that, that, in that case, that probably will be better. Okay, so here we have a question uh, from the large data set. The daily mean temperature during August 2015 is recorded at Heathrow and Leeming. Uh, for Heathrow, the sum of x is 562.0 and the sum of x squared is uh, 10,301.2. Calculate the mean and the standard deviation for Heathrow. Well, let's just remember those formulas then. So the mean x bar is the sum of x divided by n, adding up all your data and divided by how many there are. And get your calculator out and you get 18.1 Celsius. For the standard deviation, here is your formula and they've already given to you the sum of x squared and you can use your previous answer to get this bit that's inside the bracket. So substitute in the numbers and calculate and we get 1.91. So on average our data is spread out by about 2 degrees from the central point of 18.1. All right then, so uh, for Leeming, the mean temperature was 15.6 with a standard deviation of 2.01. So we can compare the median, sorry, the means between the two sets of data and the standard deviation between the two sets of data. Yeah, compare the two data sets. So uh, what we can say here is that the mean daily temperature for Leeming is lower than Heathrow, 15.6 compared to 18.1. But Leeming has a greater spread of temperatures, 2.01 comparison to 1.91. And that's all you need to write. You need one comparison for the median or the average and one comparison for the spread. Remember, you must always compare the measure of location as well as the measure of spread. There we are. All right, so here we go with a question for yourself. Pause the video and have a go. All right, let's have a go at this question then. So two classes from primary school children took to uh, complete a puzzle. Um, summary statistics for the time in minutes the children took are shown in the table. Calculate the mean standard deviation of the times and compare the distributions. So let's work with class 2b first. Let's work out its mean. So in this case here, it's going to be the sum of x divided by n. So that's 650 divided by 20 which gives us 32.5 and this measured in minutes. Um, for the standard deviation, it is the square root of the sum of x squared divided by n subtract the mean squared, so calculate this. And when you calculate this, you get 6.61. So the children from class 2b took about 32.5 minutes to complete their puzzle with an average spread of about 6.61 minutes. For class 2f, we'll use the letter y for in this case. Um, we're going to have uh, the mean, which is the sum of x divided by n, which is equal to 27.2. So a bit faster than class 2b. And the standard deviation is going to be the big square root of the sum of x squared divided by n subtract the mean. And in this case here we're going to get 11.33. Okay, so comparing in two different ways. First of all, comparing the averages, class 2f was on average faster 
at solving puzzles, at solving a puzzle. Um, and we can say that class 2f had a wider spread of results. Class 2f also had a wider range of times. Always try and link it back to the context of the problem here. You can see that I've written average um, was on average faster at solving the puzzle because that's what this question is banging on about. Okay, so always try and link it back to the context of the question. Don't just say the mean, mean the mean is higher and the spread of data is higher. That's, that's not really that useful. Um, try and link it back to the context of the question. All right, then. So thanks very much for watching this video. Make sure you have a go at some questions from exercise three e, particularly those last ones, because that's where it's going to challenge you most. Thanks very much for watching.